Meet former Lieutenant General David Morrison. He served as Chief of the Australian Army from June 2011 until his retirement in May 2015. To much fanfare, he was named Australian of the Year for 2016, but more recently, he's officially Australia's biggest dickhead. You see, after a career of telling people what to do and how to behave, Morrison decided to parlay his penchant for policing behaviour into Chairman of the Diversity Council of Australia. Yeah, that doesn't sound like some Orwellian nightmare, does it? So what big issues of the day has the Australian of the Year decided to tackle? Let's take a look, shall we? Words at work. Building inclusion through the power of language. Here's a tip for all those PR firms and marketing managers out there. We see through your bullshit. Using terms like diversity and inclusive doesn't make you those things. Calling shit sugar doesn't make it taste any better. G'day, I'm David Morrison, Chair of the Diversity Council Australia. Every day at work, there are hazards that you walk past without realising just how dangerous they are. Ooh, exaggerated horror movie cliché. In every office, there are things that you shouldn't be exposed to for long periods of time. Ah yes, cue the light-hearted, amusing background music to disarm us into believing this is just a suggestion about how we might talk to each other in a more inclusive way. You know, instead of some authoritarian speech code. Because some things are just plain bad for you. I'm talking about the power of words. Yeah, let's focus on the non-problem and ignore the fact that you work with lazy, pig-eyed sacks of shit that can't clean up after themselves. The research has told us for years how language cuts people out or cuts them down. The global career mapping project that we're working on is actually looking at how we... Come on, girls. Let's get cracking. Girls. Oh, the humanity. Let me recommend a more inclusive way of engaging with the girls. I mean, wenches. I mean, whatever the right word is. The global career mapping project that we're working on is actually looking at how we... Hey, Orange She-Beast, you know how to book a meeting room? Or does everybody have to walk around you and your basic lack of spatial awareness? And yet it still happens. I know I get called feisty and bossy behind my back. Well, if it's behind your back, how do you know? And even if that did happen, given what we know about online abuse, there's a good chance it's probably... Other women saying it. Oh, and ball breaker too. <laughs> but you wouldn't say that about a bloke, would you? Bloke? What kind of sexist language is that? Stupid Sheila. You're right, though. I wouldn't say that to a bloke. I might call him a loudmouth, arrogant, wanker, prick. Or you can even do combinations like arrogant prick or loudmouth wanker. You can actually get quite creative with this stuff. Just for speaking up? Hmm. When I go to meetings, the men always try to talk over me. And it's really disappointing. We don't talk over you. No, you cut me off all the time. Like the other day I was trying really? to get... We don't, we don't cut you off. When do we cut you off? <sighs> Firstly, can we address your fifth grade haircut? Get to the stylist and fix that shit up immediately. Second, if someone interrupts you or talks over you, call them out on it. Don't sit there and sigh like a helpless victim. Assert yourself. Aren't you a strong, independent woman? Grow some ovaries and woman up. Fucking zombie face, bitch. Oh, my mate's having an 80s theme party. Oh, that's so gay. I mean, um, it's like lame and it's like stupid and um, it's dumb. Nothing like a good old 80s party. You know, rock up with your mullet and your heavy metal t-shirt. The only thing gay in this scenario is the expression on this simpleton's face. 
That's the kind of face you pull when someone floats a silent killer past your unsuspecting nostrils. Otherwise, there's no excuse for that type of behavior, unless it's... Because you're gay. All sorts of people cop it. Old labels that don't do justice to who we are today. Abo. Retard. Spaz. Poofter. Fag. Dyke. Dickhead. When it comes to words at work, we've all got to walk the talk. Words. Making people feel good and bad since offices were invented. David, when you say walk the talk, you mean that as a figure of speech, right? Ableist prick. Now you might be thinking, some of these aren't that bad. But the problem with these kinds of initiatives is where does it all end? Where do you draw the line between what is and is an acceptable speech? And who gets to decide? Well, for dickhead of the year, it extends to the usage of the word guys. Listen to this. You've called out the phrase guys. Hey, guys, guys, mm -hmm. can we have a meeting? Guys, what do you think? Which I use all the time. So and, do uh, I. <laughs> yep, and you pointed out, and you're right. It's, it's a problem because I'm not a guy. It's difficult to put into words how contemptibly stupid that statement is. She uses a phrase by her own admission all the time in a way that's perfectly acceptable in common usage. But since the language Nazi has put this thought in her head, it's now a problem. No, and uh, look, I, I, I am now, I have now removed that from my, uh, my uh, lexicon. Yeah. Well, good for you, dickhead. You've removed it from your lexicon. Well, while you're at it, you might as well remove the word diversity because the only council you're a chairman of is the Conformity Council, where everyone behaves like a boring Morrison automaton. There is absolutely nothing wrong with any of those words in and of themselves. They're only words. It's the context that counts. It's the user. It's the intention behind the words that makes them good or bad. The words are completely neutral. The words are innocent. I get tired of people talking about bad words and bad language. Bullshit. It's the context that makes them good or bad. The context that makes them good or bad.